quite often when riding with students they won't get up to the speed limit when it's wet now are wet roads slippery a wet road is likely to give you slightly less grip than a dry road because there's surface water between the tyre and the tarmac you've also got colder tyres so again you'll have slightly less grip but just because the road is wet doesn't mean it's slippery bends, turns and roundabouts there is the potential for there to be a problem because you're going to be leaning so you're going to have slightly less grip and there's always the possibility on bends, turns and roundabouts where you can't see the surface in advance for there to be a diesel spillage or some other road surface issue that makes the surface less grippy than normal so in the wet in a straight line I would normally ride at the usual speed limit if it's safe to do so of course allowing a longer stopping distance we usually recommend double so your four seconds rather than your two and that in reality that's a really long way back from the vehicle in front I'm probably still only doing two But the fact that it's wet doesn't prevent me from getting up to the speed limit. Let's just watch what goes on here. And it's also not going to stop me from filtering, just because it's raining. There's quite a deep divide between these two lanes, just to be quite careful not to get stuck in the rut. Mr. Lorry a little way, thank you. There's a big divide between the lanes. Just got to try and cut across it. So if you wonder why I'm taking a straight, slightly strange line, can't necessarily go directly down the middle of the vehicles because my tyres tend to track in the lane dividing tarmac rut. Great thing about this bike being DCT automatic is that when I'm filtering, I always have my thumb over the horn. I'm not trying to use the clutch all the time. Makes that nice and easy. If it hasn't rained for a long time, then the roads could be slippery. This is due to all of the deposits that build up on the road in the dry spells, whether that's rubber, dust, just general road dirt, mud, And when it becomes wet for the first time, it will be slippery for a good few hours until it's been washed off the road a little bit. So if you've had a long dry spell, you get the first bit of rain, you do need to be careful because it's likely that any part of the road surface is going to be less grippy than normal. However, today it's been raining all night and most of yesterday evening. The roads are generally quite clean, but I am checking the surface particularly in this light for anything that looks grey coloured in low light conditions it's not particularly bright today it's quite tricky to see whether there are diesel spillages because you quite often can't see the rainbow colours you'll just see a slightly different shade of tarmac and it tends to look a lighter grey colour and with this amount of surface water it's also quite tricky sometimes to see the lane markings so bear in mind that whilst you can't see them particularly easily, neither could the other vehicles. So people might be cutting across into your lane when you're not expecting them to. How do I change my riding when I'm riding in the wet? I plan ahead more. So I'm looking all the way up the road. I'm being prepared to ease off the throttle gently but early as soon as I can see the potential that I'm going to need to slow down. So whilst we train everybody to ride smoothly, in the wet weather you need to be even smoother and to start your slowing down processes earlier if you start easing off earlier then you've got more time to take your speed down through your braking which should be really smooth 50 50 front and rear and then gently and smoothly back on your throttle when you want to get going again anything sudden in the wet is going to cause you a problem Just be smooth.
trees and gentle. Try not to be afraid of rain or wet surfaces. As a general rule, when it's wet, I ride at the speed limit, if it's safe to do so, of course, in a straight line. And on my bends, turns and roundabouts, I'm a little less speedy than I would usually be on a dry day. I'm more gentle as I move off with the throttle. I wouldn't be trying to get out into small gaps with a handful of throttle, not that I really do that anyway, but if you're being a little bit more positive, planning ahead, easing the throttle. And if you were changing gear and using your clutch, again, we would be easing the clutch, just being really gentle, particularly when you move off, not to give it too much clutch too soon. Keep your hands nice and relaxed on the handlebars. Allow the bike to do what it needs to do. That's giving it the gentle input that it might require to change position or complete a turn. When you're using your throttle, be really smooth when you open your throttle and when you close your throttle. Gently rolling it rather than treating it like an on-off switch. When you're using your clutch, not that I can demonstrate that on this bike, but when you're using your clutch, be very gentle and smooth when you're pulling away. Find the beginning of the bike point, gently gain your balance by easing it through just a little bit more and then ease it all the way through or change gears depending on what it is you're about to do. So again, I'm easing off as soon as I see the brake lights, mirrors and easing off the throttle. I can see a queue ahead, so I'm going to start braking early even though the van behind doesn't seem to want me to. The good news is I've got a lovely big gap in front of me in case he does get too close. As I approach the bend, I'm looking at the road surface. I'm bringing my speed down, a little bit of rear brake only as I come round as the cars are slowing down on the bends and I don't really want to be touching the front brake. I don't need to at this speed. So change the speed limit, gently rolling on the throttle, making my way up to the speed limit. Road surface looks good. Just checking my mirrors for the BMW that's coming out in front. Remember to keep a good distance back. And I'm looking as far ahead and beyond the bus, trying to plan for when that bus stops. What's going to happen? Is he going to be stopped for long? Is he going to come out again before I get there? Whilst also watching these cars that are directly in front in case any of those starts to slow down in the meantime. All the while I'm still scanning the road surface. Which surfaces are slippery in the rain or the wet conditions? Any surface which itself is inherently going to be slippery like drain covers or manhole covers which if you're on a lean angle, so if you're doing a bend turn or a roundabout, you're likely to slip on due to the lack of grip. But if you're going in a straight line, they're not such a problem. Unless you're excessively braking or excessively accelerating, neither of which we would be doing in the wet anyway, because everything needs to be super smooth. So I'm starting to brake early, even though this Mitsubishi seems to want to get in my top box. Down to just my rear brake. Keeping a good eye on my mirrors in case there's any cyclists in the cycle lane, but there aren't any today. So if you're trying to avoid going over a drain cover on a bend turn or roundabout, quite often I'll say to a student, try not to go over the drain cover and they go directly over the drain cover. A really good way to avoid going over something in the road is to look at the bit of the tarmac you do want to use instead. So draw your eyes away from the drain cover or obstacle in the road that you don't want to run over. Look at the bit of the tarmac that you do want to use, that's the safest line. And that should take your bike over that line instead. A little bit of positive target fixation. So give yourself something to aim for or an area to ride over. Quite often when we're trying to avoid something, we'll look straight at it. And that's not particularly helpful on a motorbike, because as you all know, where you look is where you go. Right. Nobody's going, so I'll get on with it. Even there, I'm positive but smooth, so it's wet, I trust the surface, there's no problem with being positive and smooth so long as you know your own bike. That's about knowing how the throttle's going to respond and having assessed the surface. Checking my mirrors early, I've already gently eased off the throttle, a little bit of brakes, take the roundabout slightly slower than I normally would just so I've got time to assess the surface and adapt my line if I need to. Early brakes. I'm going to be careful with filtering up the left of these vehicles because there are little cut-throughs where vehicles might be about to turn, particularly where you've got a van, they might swing out to the left, if not a car. Plenty of cars seem to think they're lorries these days. Remember, the smaller the gap, reduce your speed. 
watching for anybody walking out in front of the bus. So be careful with the bus because he's a learner if he starts to move. Okay, we're good. Now, at what point do you stop filtering as you're approaching a roundabout? Well, the queue proceeds beyond the roundabout, and the queue is probably on the roundabout. It can become quite tricky with vision sometimes if your visor is getting covered in rain and it's sitting on the visor. That usually happens if you're not going fast enough for it to bead off or if your visor has become scratched and the rain can't bead off particularly easily. And if that happens you're probably going to have to wipe your visor to gain the view which will probably result in more scratches and the same problem. Sometimes on a very wet day like today there's so much moisture in the air that even though I've got a pinlock in this visor, the pinlock itself is gaining steam on the underside or the inside because there's nowhere for that moisture to go. If I was going a little bit faster, it would probably clear itself, but I'm breathing too much <laughs> and I'm too warm, creating too much moisture inside the helmet. And lifting the visor then causes the rain to get on the inside, which causes more problems. As you can see, it's been raining for quite some time today. I'm on my second pair of gloves. The other pair is totally sodden. I've done two lessons this morning already. When you're riding in the wet, try and allow yourself extra time to complete your journey safely. Also to build in some time to have breaks where you can warm up. Today it's not particularly warm and it's very wet. So my feet are cold and my fingertips are currently a little bit chilly. I could probably do with turning the grips off a little bit. I have got my heated gloves on but the rest of me is nice and warm because I've also got a heated body warmer but if you don't have those things and you do a lot of riding in the cold and wet I would suggest you think about saving up for some heated motorcycle clothing it's really very very good and it can transform a cold wet ride from something that's utterly miserable into something that is actually quite enjoyable provided you're focused and you're planning far enough ahead and you're allowing yourself to relax and enjoy the ride. Smooth and gentle on the pull away, notice quite a lot of surface water. I'm going to put my visor down in case I get splashed in the face. Trying to keep my tyres out of the leaf debris that's accumulated in position two. Trying to choose a smooth line, don't be afraid to lean, just relax and let the bike go with it. Choosing your smooth line also to avoid the flood, also to avoid the leaf debris. I'm accelerating at the same pace as the vehicles in front without getting too close. We're in a 40 mile an hour speed limit. I can see a big splash of puddle ahead, so let's see if there's another flood. Let me move out early, just try and take a more central position. It's just a large body of surface water, so we're okay. Remember motorcycle tyres are less likely to aquaplane than a car tyre because of the profile of the tyre. They're a bit more pointy shaped rather than flat shaped. <laughs> However, it is still possible to aquaplane if you hit a large body of water at speed. And aquaplaning is when the water gets between the tyre and the tarmac and then you lose your ability to do anything. You can't really reduce your speed, you can't steer, you can't brake, nothing really has much of an input. You kind of have to just go with it. So try and keep your eyes open and look well ahead of the car in front to judge your road surface. Notice cues, and I mean a cue as in notice large splashes from the cars ahead, which gives you an idea that there might be a large body of water. Otherwise, if the road's looking especially shiny, there's no vehicles in front of you. If it's looking particularly shiny, perhaps that's water, not road surface. Remember, other road users aren't necessarily going to be as concerned for your welfare as they are for themselves. So even if there are floods around, some of the cars are going to go quite quick into those floods and it is going to go all over you in a big wave which can prevent you from seeing anything and obviously has the resulting effect of you being extremely wet. 
I'm easing off early, gently squeezing the brakes. I'm going to ease gently off the brakes, holding my speed steady, relaxing, choosing the line past the drain cover to get out of the blind spot of the van with some gentle acceleration, checking my mirrors, and then checking my stopping distance is still acceptable. If we were going onto the motorway, which we're not today, but if we were, you then become part of a chain of vehicles in what I'd only describe as a jet wash. The spray that you'll get from the vehicles when it's been raining this much is quite immense. It could also make you less visible to others if you're covered in spray. If you imagine the visibility is generally reduced. Just watching the road surface for any diesel deposits. So the lights have changed. Checking my mirrors. I'm gently rolling off the throttle. Gently starting with both brakes. 50-50. That's lever pressure. Taking the speed down. And then down to the rear brake. It's not much different to how I would normally stop. It's just I'm starting it earlier. Taking more time about taking the speed off. Making sure that it's lovely and smooth on the rear brake to finish the stop. The good thing about wearing the waterproof overcoat and trousers is that my motorcycle gear that's underneath is only a little bit soggy around the edges. So things like your cuffs, the bottom of the jacket occasionally. Which means I haven't got to dry out the entire seat. Nice and smooth. Checking out the road surface. This is a roundabout where we often have diesel spillages or fuel spillages of some sort or another because there's a petrol station just off the first exit, which I didn't take. Relaxing, allowing the bike to lean, just keeping my arms nice and relaxed. I'm not going particularly fast. I would usually take that roundabout a little bit quicker if it was dry. And again, relax. A little bit of counter steering. Mirrors easing off. Starting the brakes nice and smooth. Speeds down, little bit of throttle, rear brake, decision made, nice and smooth away. Look at the road surface, watching the cars on the left, time to do a check, checking the road surface again, still checking it because I'm on a bend, I want to be planning this line just in case there is any fuel in the middle of the lane, or the line that I've chosen to take. Mirrors. Take the speed down, nice and smooth and gentle, 50-50. Keeping my distance. I hope that's helped. Oh, are you? You parked in my spot. <laughs> <laughs> Only because it's easier for me to get out of that one than this one. This one's more uphill. If you remember, my legs are about this long. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Thank you. It's not really my spot, but it kind of is because my legs are so short. Thank you, Ben. It's all right for your long legs. It's much harder to get down there with a big heavy bike. <laughs> what a lovely day.